the piece means a certain thing to me, but it's nothing that I can transcribe to the listener, of course, and there's nothing that you should hear or realize, or it's up to every listener to make his own interpretation. It was not the plan to write a piece that would be called Ophelia, but while I was writing I was thinking often that motorized piano is like an Ophelia actually. It is owned or has a relationship with um, owners like Ophelia's father or lover and it can never play alone usually, the piano. But still there is a, a huge soul to the instrument or every instrument and if you really think the instrument has a soul then it's also kind of abusive or very loving or it can be in so many things but it's never possible that the instrument can express itself. I come from a family that is not made out of musicians. I lived in the countryside and there was really nothing to do, so I basically what I did all day was playing the instruments because it was boring, basically, but also, of course, because I love music. But then I realized when I came further and further that I really don't like to be on stage. How can you spend your life with music without being on stage? Composer I never really thought of because uh, I thought it's only for men, uh, without being angry about it or something. It was just came, didn't came into my mind that one could be composer as a woman. But then I heard a piece by a woman and yeah, that is what I want to do, or can do, or can spend my whole life with. My music is influenced by the place I'm living on, the island Gotland in Sweden, in the Baltic. I think it's not so much the island, but it's um, the sea. The sea makes you think of the whole thing. It just makes you feel grateful that you are alive in this huge world that is so impressive. And it's good to be reminded that you're just one of many and it doesn't really make a difference. We hear the motorized piano first from the outside somehow, like a listener normally, and then you enter the instrument during the piece, and then you leave the instrument again and hear from the outside as normal. I think the beauty with the motors is that they do something that we don't expect. On the one hand, we have certain ex expectations to motors, they can't do beautiful sounds or they can't be fragile or something like that. But also there is nobody that I have to identify with. There's no subject behind that I have to recognize myself with maybe or that imposes certain feelings to the music. It's more a pure musical thing then and it could be written by anybody and for anybody. It's not not especially for a certain audience that has a musical background. I think it can speak to really the larger size of audience. I have done motors before in the piano in the same way roundabout but um, you couldn't uh, close the piano so that was the big um, thing that Irkam did for me that uh, I could close the piano and really be inside the instrument at the same time as the motors are playing. Tout l'enjeu de ce projet c'était de faire en fait une espèce de version 2. Lisa elle a déjà travaillé avec un système automatisé pour piano préparé avec des moteurs qui tournent, qui font cycler euh, du papier et qui passent sur les cordes. Donc cette musicalité euh, euh, lui tenait à cœur et elle voulait aussi euh, donner ce côté performance aux musiciens qui puissent directement manipuler et interagir avec la machine. Donc on a fabriqué un dispositif euh, avec une carte électronique qui communique avec l'ordinateur en réseau, qui s'intègre à l'intérieur du programme qui gère la partie électronique de la pièce 
et qui permet du coup de transférer le contrôle de ces moteurs à l'instrumentiste qui est présent juste à côté et qui fonctionne lui en binôme instrumental avec le pianiste, avec une partie évidemment totalement écrite euh, dans la partition euh, qui comporte une, une partie spécifique euh, pour la manipulation de ces moteurs. Lisa, elle savait exactement ce qu'elle voulait. Les papiers, elle frappe les cordes et ça sort de résonance qui sont jouées par le pianiste. Et tout ça a été calculé, euh, bon, je dirais plutôt, ça a été écrit dans la partition. Dès les départs, euh, elle savait que c'était une musique qui était euh, je dirais un peu planante, un peu contemplative. Et je pense que le rôle de moteur, c'est tout à fait musical parce qu'elle rentre dans cette contemplation on a presque quelque chose d'hypnotisante. I feel a strong connection to Helmut Lachenmann. On the one hand, of course, because uh, there is an uh, aspect that you use the instrument in a totally different way. And, but also more even, I think, that he also derives from a point, a starting point that is music. There's a kind of conversation with music, I feel, also in his music. And also certain playfulness and um, some kind of melancholy to the past. I, I feel that's, that's a strong connection, but of course he was so um, courageous and that is just um, important. It's not really only me who's writing the music, maybe it's really, I hope, something that's in the air uh, of the time and that's connected with the world. <laughs> 